Welcome to our service today on the St Saviour's and Tortlewood Church's YouTube channel. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. We start with our opening hymn, Fight the Good Fight with All Thy Might. As our musicians play, do please sing along to the words on screen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. And we pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As sisters and brothers in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for today. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the prayer for those affected by coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from Acts. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, 
and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you, for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who is a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that he had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while, we, while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told him what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them, in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Every Sunday in church we read the Bible. We do it because it teaches us about God. We listen to stories about Jesus. We can learn things from it. Some people don't read the Bible. They think it's got nothing to say to them. Others think it's a bit of history, a history book, boring events, nothing terribly exciting. Christians, us, find it's exciting, it's colourful, it has things to teach us. In our Gospel reading that we've just heard, The Road to Emmaus, we have a colourful moment for the two disciples, Simon and Cleopas. They were two of Jesus' followers heading home from Jerusalem. 
They'd been through the calamitous events of Good Friday. Their Lord, leader and friend had been crucified, dead and buried. They'd heard that the tomb was empty, visited both by the women and some of the disciples. But like all of Jesus' followers, they couldn't get their heads around it. Emotional and confused, uncertain what it all meant, they go home, return to their normal lives. And on the road they meet Jesus, though initially they were kept from recognising him. Jesus walks the road with Simon Cleopas. He gets them to open up, tell him what's going on, what they are feeling. Then he takes the time to explain the meaning of the events of Easter to them. He explains why he had to die on the cross. He explains the prophecies about him in the Old Testament. He explains God's plan for the world. And later, in breaking bread, he showed them who he was. And in doing so, Jesus brought alive the Bible, helped the man, men to understand their faith. And along with the rest of Jesus' disciples and other followers, they were changed forever. They went out and shared the good news with other people. They lived out their faith in a public way so people could see in the way that they were, the things that they did and said, their belief in God. Jesus isn't physically here walking the earth with us here in Guernsey, but through God's Spirit, he is with us now. And through the Bible, we can know all about Jesus and our lives can be changed too. Think for a moment. Has the Bible got nothing to say to me? Is it just a blank book? Or is it just a few stories, a bit of history, just black and white? Or can it be exciting, colourful and have things to teach me? And if it does, what does that mean for my life? How do I live out as a Christian day to day? When I'm at home with my family in lockdown, what's my faith like? When in a few weeks or months I'm able to be out with my friends or at school or work, how will my faith be seen? Will those I spend time with see my faith in what I do and in what I say? Oh, let's pray. Dear God, thank you that Jesus opened the scriptures to Simon and Cleopas so that they understood what you had done and their lives were changed. Help us too to comprehend all that you have done for us and may it make a difference to how we live out our lives. Amen. So let us turn to God in our prayers of intercession and to the words, Jesus, Lord of life, please respond in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, Give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life. 
be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life of a sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing our final hymn, To God be the glory, great things he has done. And as the musicians play, please sing along to the words on screen.
and blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.